Oh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Deputy Commissioner Hudson, you might recall on a previous occasion I asked you some questions about an operation conducted by the Fixated Persons Unit involving the arrest of Mr Christo Lanka. Do you remember that? Uh, yes, sir, I do. And uh, you'll be aware that that matter ultimately was withdrawn by the police and the police had to pay fixed costs in the order of about $12,000? That's correct, sir, yes. Are you also aware on the 16th of March in another estimates hearing, uh, I tabled some video footage uh, of a court proceeding, <coughs> uh, another case brought by the Fixated Persons Unit, which appeared to show uh, an officer potentially coaching witnesses while they were giving evidence in the witness box and awaiting to give their evidence? Yes, sir, I did say that. Uh, are those matters under investigation, to your knowledge, either by the Professional Standards Command or by the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission? Um, sir, they're currently under investigation by the Professional Standards Command under Strike Force Lysiana. Um, the issues they're, or they're investigating uh, relate to a number of criminal allegations in relation to perjury and interfering with a witness. Okay. Uh, when was that Strike Force established? I became aware of the video, um, I think the day after, or the day of, uh, the, the estimates hearing. <laughs> I spoke to Mr Walton, the Counter-Terrorism and Special Tactics Commander, and suggested to him that it be initiated that day. Um, he contacted the Commander of Professional Standards, and my understanding, it, it was initiated that day. OK. And these are, whatever the outcome, these are serious matters and worthy of investigation? Um, the, the way it's been approached, they are criminal allegations, yes, sir. OK, thank you. Uh, given that it's an ongoing investigation, I won't, I won't press you further, but could I ask this question? Uh, does that strike force and that investigation extend to the uh, conduct of either the unit or that particular officer in relation to the uh, aborted prosecution of Mr Lenker? Uh, no, sir, it does not. It's specific to that video and mm. the circumstances surrounding that matter, which I think were in 2018. OK. Um, in relation to that uh, earlier aborted prosecution of Mr Lanker, um, is that a matter, given how that matter ended up, with the police withdrawing uh, the prosecution, the publicity, the, the appearance that the police were being deployed against a critic of the government, of the Deputy Premier and the then, uh, uh, the then Deputy Premier. Is that something that you will get across to, as to how this matter was brought forward and whether there was a sound basis for it? My understanding is, sir, that um, it was viewed by the investigator as a component of an escalating series of events um, by Mr Lankter and uh, Mr Shanks. Um, I think I've said previously that the process wasn't followed in a previous estimates hearing, um, and I questioned that um, at the time and provided advice back to the command that I wanted to ensure that the process as signed off by the executive was followed in the future. My advice at the time was, even though the process wasn't followed, of referral to the fixated threat assessment uh, committee before allocation that the outcome would have been the same, and that advice came from counter-terrorism and also police prosecutions. Um, on the basis of that, um, the matter went proceeded. Up until a point um, when Mr Shanks was... There was some process initiated for contempt in relation to some videos that Mr Shanks posted okay. by the Fixated Persons Unit and the Police Prosecutions Command. I questioned that when I became aware of it. Um, there was some criticism in relation to the process um, and it was adjourned for a later date. And I asked, well, we, we needed to get Crown solicitor advice in relation to that matter, the Shanks matter, for contempt. And I also directed Scott Cook and Mark Walton to get independent advice in relation to the Lanka matter. I think this was a matter that was also canvassed at a previous estimates hearing, including the the basis upon which that suppression order was sought. Yes. Um, and I think at the time I expressed the view that it seemed to be pretty pretty thin. 
I think that was the legal advice you got, wasn't it? Uh, the, the legal advice we obtained was um, more or less that, yes. OK. But <clears throat> given that the, the, the original matter, the prosecution against Mr Lanker, had to be abandoned by the police in such you know, public terms, uh, aren't you concerned about whether or not the police force proceeded appropriately in that, on, on that occasion? My viewing of it, sir, is that um, I don't think there was any corruption involved. I don't think there was any... Um, I think there were mistakes made um, by, the, by the investigator. Um, and without any way condoning the behaviour that caused it to happen, um, I, by uh, Chris Dolenka, um, I think the investigator thought it was a component of something that was escalating, that was um, we were already seeking legal advice on. This was the last straw in relation to that escalating series of events in relation to this group and Mr Barillaro. So I don't think there was corruption involved, um, but I think in hindsight I would have preferred it to follow the appropriate process, as I've already indicated, as soon as the arrest was made to the Counter-Terrorism Command. Um, I think the legal advice we obtained, um, and there's still a, a thought within both prosecutions and counter-terrorism that the matter could have proceeded the hearing. However, the senior prosecutor we have, we had reviewed the matter, identified that we would have trouble proving intent in the charge that was preferred. And on that basis, um, the matter was withdrawn. Uh, in the light of your current investigation into the person who I think was the, the investigating officer that's in correct. the Lanka matter, that's correct, isn't it? Correct, yes. Um, and that doesn't cause you to have some concerns about that first investigation? Uh, I've seen the video that was posted and, and played at budget estimates. There's a few questions in my mind in relation to... Um, whether the video has been modified in any way, or I'm not sure, and that'll be part of the investigation that plays out. Shortened, I think. So, and I think that's reasonable. And you know, when a video is played, and we don't know, you know, the, the true sources of it. Um, so I think I really need to see the outcome of that investigation. Sure, you'll have access to the full court CCTV. Um, the last advice I got was that we were still in. Um, consultation with the Sheriff's Office to get that. OK. OK, well, I might put a pin in this conversation um, and perhaps ask Commissioner Webb. Um, the Legislative Council passed a call for papers uh, asking for all the information or the documents relating to the establishment and operation of Strike Force Why I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, Wyargan. Um, very little was actually produced to the Legislative Council. Is that because the police on legal advice took the view that these matters fell within the administration of justice? Is anybody here able to answer that question? Are you, can you enlighten there? Um, I've got about a million strike force names in my head. So okay, well, if you could actually clarify what the matter was. And well, strike force Wyargan was an, to, apparently to investigate uh, Mr Shanks and Mr Lanka for I don't know what. Um, so are that, you aware of that be, strike force? It would, be, it would be the fixated person's unit investigation. <clears throat> OK, so that would be that one. Um, ha, so how is a strike force established? What are the mechanics? Um, depending upon the resources deployed to a particular matter, um, within, you know, it's normally within the, the uh, State Crime Command or the Counter-Terrorism Command, uh, strike forces um, rather uh, are created um, on the current investigation management platform that we call Eagle Eye, so that all documents and all records can be captured in that um, in that IT system. Mm -hmm. um, and as part of that process, a strike force name is allocated. Okay. In relation to this particular strike force, and if you can't say, obviously, you can take questions on notice. Um, what were the resources allocated to this? 
how many officers? I would have to take that on notice okay. um, totally. I, I think the team is five detectives, but mm -hmm. um, with De Detective Sergeant Mc McQueen in charge, um, but I will take that on notice. Okay. Um, were you aware whether or not ministers or the police minister of the time was briefed about the existence of that strike force? Or are these things usually not briefed to the minister? I would be surprised, sir, because I didn't know about it. OK, again, happy for you to take it on notice. Um, do you know whether or not the strike force engaged in any in-person surveillance or phone tapping? I don't know, but not, not that I'm aware of. I would be surprised. OK, if you could take that on notice. Yes. Was the former <coughs> police commissioner aware of it? Was the commissioner of the time aware of all strike forces, and this one in particular? Before the point of charge? At any point. Um, he would have been aware, as I became aware, at the time that the charges against Christo Lanka were preferred. OK, so... Prior to that, I'm unsure. I would so, be surprised. So approval of strike forces are at, what, Deputy Commissioner level or, or lower than that? Uh, approval of strike forces, um, normally at Superintendent level. OK. <coughs> OK, so I guess... And I guess, Commissioner, I'm happy for you to take this on notice about the reasons why very few documents relating to the strike force were returned to the Legislative Council. If you could take that on notice, that would be approved. Um, that would be very much appreciated.